Canva is an incredible tool that lets anyone make professional quality graphic designs. The best part is that they offer their paid subscription for free to nonprofits. In this video, I'm going to cover how to use Canva to make your Church Connect card images look amazing. Just to quickly cover the basics though, Canva is essentially Photoshop for dummies. I say that as one of the dummies. I use Canva all the time. You can make images, slides, flyers, t-shirts, even videos on this platform. I'll focus on creating Church Connect card images using templates that I've put together just for you. So let's get into it. The first thing that I have to talk about when using Canva is the brand kit. So in the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, whenever you're creating images, there's a brand button. If you click on it or even just hover your mouse over it, it opens up a, uh, a window where you can access all of your church's branding assets that you've uploaded into Canva. That can be logos, your color palette, even the fonts that you use at your church. You can have all of that uploaded in Canva, and that way you can easily access them as you make images in Canva. That helps you make everything or keep everything very consistent across the board, no matter what you're creating. And so it's also cohesive with the, the way that your church is, like, presents itself across the internet. It's awesome. This is your secret weapon for making you look like a graphic design pro at your church as you use Canva. Now that I've got that out of the way though, let's talk about how I put together some images here for the Church Connect page that we show off in live streams that we do all the time. I put together a template, that's what you're looking at now, of images that you can use for your church to make your Church Connect page look amazing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a few of these cards just to kind of show you how I accomplished some of these details so that you can jump in and do that yourself. So the first one here is this plan of visit card. I'll zoom in a little bit just so that we can focus on this one. Uh, one thing that I, what I'll show you is how I accomplished this effect where I have these big blocky letters that look like one cohesive image. I love this effect because it almost looks like the letters are a cutout that allow you to see an image that's behind the image. What these are, these are frames. A frame is, if, if I click on the elements button in this toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, and then search, here's what I searched to get these. I just searched the word letters. And then in the top here, there's an option to search through letters that are graphics, photos, and so forth, but there's a frames option. What I did is I scrolled through these frames and just selected the letters for the word visit, V-I-S-I-T. And I added those elements to this image. And I sized them, you know, made, positioned them, made them, arranged them the way I needed to arrange them. But as you can see here, this letter V doesn't look like this. A frame allows you to grab a, a photo, drag and drop it into the frame, and that photo takes on the shape of that frame. So what I did from here, once I had the word visit on this image, then I searched the word worship in the elements menu. And then I, then I selected the photos option in this, this row of tabs. And then I found an image that I liked. I think, it, yeah, it was this one. Okay, so I added this image to the frames. Now, this process gets a little bit tedious. It's simple and it's easy, but it's tedious, just FYI. I drag and drop the image over the frame, and then the frame will take on, there we go, the frame will take on that image. That's how, that, that's how frames work, I love frames. But the, the effect that I've created here is this looks like one cohesive image across all of these letters. What you have to do in Canva, and Photoshop is better at this than Canva, but you can still do this in Canva. You have to add this image to every single one of these letters. And once you have the image added to these letters, then you have to double click on it and it opens up this, this version of the image that's very transparent. And you can resize it, you can expand it so that it covers all of the letters from the, the letter V to the letter T. And once I have it positioned the way I like, I just let go, click out of it, and then do the same thing for the next letter in this lineup. I have to expand each one, make sure it covers all of the letters, now the secret to this is, and you have to make it line up. You have to make sure that every time you do this, it's positioned exactly the same for every single letter. The benefit though is that as you can see, 
this is very transparent. The image that I'm, I'm positioning is transparent and it allows me to see behind it. So what I'll do is I'll align an element or some aspect of this image with what's already uploaded to one of the frames behind it. So you can see like the papers that they're holding in the bottom right hand corner of this image. Part of that is viewable in the letter T of the word visit. So I'm gonna line those up and boom, I've just made this line up with, like the, the image in the letter S line up with the image in the letter V. So it all looks cohesive across all of the letters as if it's just one image. That's how you create that effect with these frames. If you have the time and the bandwidth, I recommend doing this because it creates an image with really high visual appeal and interest. But as you can see, it is a bit time consuming. So one thing that I did, and this is something that um, I, I just wanna make you aware of. If you don't feel like you have the time and bandwidth to do that for all of these images, I did create other templates that are a little bit simpler and have less work to do. Like this, this is the same plan of visit card, but instead of, an Im like instead of frames with an image in each one, it's just a big blocky letter that you can leave, you can leave it at this color or you can add one of your church's brand colors to it to make it really awesome. That's just an option. I'll make sure that I have, I'll make sure that, that there's a link to each of these templates in the description of this video below. So check those out and you can choose which of these templates you prefer to use at your church. The next one I'll show you is the support the mission card. So I've got the nice script here. I added uh, an element here for this button that looks like a mouse that's clicking on a button and I added text over that. Just a, it's really simple. You can throw that together in a couple seconds. But I added an image to the background with a fade over it. That fade is not part of the image itself. This is actually an element that I found under the element screen. I think I searched fade. Um, and then once I selected what I wanted, I was able to click on that element and I added this church's color, one of the colors in the color palette to this image. And then I just resized it. So like the, the actual original size of this element, of this fade, let me just zoom, I can zoom out and resize it a little bit. It looked a little bit like this. Now this works technically because there's a little bit of a fade here on the left hand side of the image, but I wanted to stretch this out across the whole thing just to make it look really nice and cohesive. So there's that fade and that, I did that just to add a little more texture to the image just so that it wasn't some generic here, please donate button, but it actually looked nice and stands out across all of the other images. Uh, the next one I'll show you is this become a volunteer card. I use this, I use this image for a form card on that Church Connect page that we use for live streams. So this is a prompt for someone to sign up to join a volunteer team at this church. But what I did is I flipped what I did for the plan of visit page or that plan of visit image. In that image, there was a, a, a solid color ba background with um, a word that was composed of frames that had an image embedded in each one. In this case, I, had an I have an image in the very background with big bold letters on top of it that are a solid color. The reason why I did this is because you don't want to do the exact same thing across all of your Church Connect card images. There needs to be some variation. That way, if you do the same thing across all of them, people start to tune them out. They, they don't see any differences, so they, they just tune out what they're seeing. This way you have variation so that every single card is able to stand out to the viewer. But one thing that I did to create this effect with this image in the background is um, I actually, let me, I can actually delete this image. So if I delete this image, you'll see here that there's a gray background. This is actually one of the church's brand colors. So I added the brand color to the background and then I found a nice image. I think I just, I went into the elements and then searched volunteer and then found an image. I just selected the photos option at the top scrolled through this list of photos and added that. Uh, as a pro tip, what I recommend you do, whether you're using an image for the frames or an image for the background, you only ever use a photo from your church. I use these stock photos because again, this is just something that we threw together to showcase Church Connect and live streams. This isn't a real church. You need to add images that are taken of your people because you need to feature the faces that people like visitors will see when they first come to your church. So make sure that you're adding images of your people from your church. Go ahead and add that to the background. But what you'll find though, in this toolbar at the very top, there's this little checkered pattern here. 
And this is for adjusting the transparency of the element that you've selected in that image. If I select the transparency, you'll see that the image actually originally looks like this. I made this non-transparent. Um, and you, you'll notice that the word volunteer basically disappears because the background image is a very similar color to the, the color I chose for those letters. So what I did is I faded it, but because I have that color in the background, this still stays on brand. The church's color is still implemented or added to this, uh, to this card, even though I have an image layered over that. So that's a really cool effect, just having one of your colors in the background, layering an image on that, and then making that image transparent so that you can see some of that color come through that image. But this allows the, the word volunteer to stand out, but I still have a picture of the people at this church to, to make it really visually appealing. The last one I'll show you in this template is the upcoming events one. This is just linking to the church's calendar. Um, the reason why I'm showcasing this is because I want to highlight the fact that you don't have to go through all the work that I've done in these images for every single one of these images. You can keep things very simple. So in this card, I have just the word upcoming events. I, threw together, I just added on this very simple little element of a, of a calendar. Didn't have to be anything, it didn't have to be anything fancy. But the one thing that I did to add some visual appeal to this is I added an element to the background where I have a calendar that's sort of tilted a little bit so that there's a little bit of texture to this. You can see the, the squares or the cells for each of, day in that calendar. I, I expanded it across the entire image. I set it at a slight angle just to make it look kind of nice. And then again, I selected that transparency button if I make it non-transparent, you can see those, that element a little more clearly. The reason why I didn't leave it like this is just because the word upcom the phrase upcoming events does disappear a little bit. It adds a lot of visual noise, so it makes it hard to read the word, uh, the, the phrase upcoming events. So I faded it a little bit just to make that go away some, but you can still see it to some degree. So there you go. That way it has some nice texture, but you can still understand all of the elements and see every all the information you need to see. I highly recommend, this is just a pro tip, as you're creating images, whether you're using this template or making an image of your own, you don't add a lot of elements, you don't add a lot of text or information. The simpler you keep it, the better. That way people can fully understand and comprehend it. You're not at, If you add a lot of small text, it's really hard to read just because most people are viewing Church Connect on a small screen on their smartphone. Like 60% of, over 60% of all web traffic is on smartphones. So just make sure that you're keeping that in mind as you create images, that people are viewing that image on a very small screen. So the smaller, the smaller you make an element or text, the harder it is to read. So just add some very, like a basic phrase or word to an image and then throw on some, like layer on some other elements beneath, beneath that just to add some visual interest and texture to the image. Um, again, I have other templates that I've created. This is the main template that I used for Church Connect that we showcase in the live streams. But I do have a simpler template with less work to do and less elements to add and you don't have any frames to add images to. So if you don't wanna go through that work, you can, do, you can use this and it'll be a lot easier. And I also have another version of this template that's in a more square, it's not in a more square format, it's in a literally square 1200 pixel by 1200 pixel format. So whichever way you prefer to do this, if you wanna have narrow rectangular cards or taller square cards, you have a template for that. So to get the most out of Canva, it should be pretty obvious by now that you need to sign up for their pro subscription and fill out the brand kit with all of your church's branding assets. Canva will give that pro subscription to you for free. This will give you access to all of the best tools Canva has to offer and help you be consistent in everything you create for your church. That's how to use Canva to make images for your Church Connect cards. If you have questions, send us a support ticket or visit churchtrack.com support. I'll see you in the next video.